VIP. Let's kick it. Hi, this is another Coralfish 12G Productions video. I'm George, and in this video, I'm going to be talking about dipping corals um, and inspecting them uh, to prevent any unwanted pests from entering or damaging your reef aquarium. Many wholesale suppliers dip their corals before they ship them. As careful as they are, it's hard to 100% eliminate any pests uh, or any eggs that might be on a coral at a time. This is why I want to educate you on uh, how to dip on your own and how to inspect your corals on your own. This simple procedure uh, is overlooked in the acclimation process all the time and it can lead to major problems down the road with your reef aquarium. Sometimes just because people don't take 10 minutes to dip their coral or inspect them, their whole tank can get damaged. I've had lots of nasty pests. I've been through almost all of them and believe me, they are not fun. If you have never dipped or inspected your corals at night thoroughly, chances are you probably have a couple pests here and there lingering in your tanks. These pests and parasites usually uh, rapidly reproduce in your aquarium. This is why it's so important to know how to dip on your own um, and how to inspect them. So now I'll dip some corals and show you what the process is like. Okay, so I know uh, there are different dips and I know Coral RX and Revive, but I'm using a dip by Seacam. It's just called Reef Dip Coral Disinfectant. Um, and it's just got multiple different chemicals like iodide uh, that kill pests and anger them. For the water that you're using to dip the corals, you're going to want to have been straight usually from the actual aquarium. So, you know, it's progressed water and, uh, I mean, corals in general, when you dip them, they're being aggravated. Um, more the pests are, but the corals are too. And so you, you don't want to mix new salt water um, for the actual dip because then it, it's almost like you're aggravating them even more. You want to use about four catfuls for a gallon. So this is about half a gallon. I'll use maybe about two catfuls. And it's, it's like a red substance. Okay. Perfect. So you can use as much water as you want. Um, so that's how much I used. And you're going to want to place the corals in there for about two or three minutes. So first I have a colony of zoanthids. And what you're looking for on these are zoanthid eating nudibranchs. Um, and these blend extremely well uh, with the zoos color. They adapt to them extremely well. They're hard to catch and that's why you look for them at night um, when the polyps are closed and all the polyps are closed right now. Next I'm doing an open brain coral and what you're looking for is like you know flatworms or eggs on this on the back side of them, the shell. Um, and those are going to be hard to get um, and I'll talk about those later in a second. And finally, I have um, a small colony of green, green candy cane coral. So back to the open brain coral. On the back side of the shell, um, there's going to be eggs. And those aren't really just removed by regular dips. So what you're going to have to do is clean the backside with a toothbrush just like this. Eggs are definitely a little harder to remove. That's why I use a toothbrush or anything just to scrub it. Now on most of these, you're, you can almost see pests kind of like jumping off um, or dying or falling. Um, and that's a good sign that you would want to put that coral in a quarantine tank um, until you know it's healthy or does not contain any pests. 
so that's good, just like that. Um, f next for the candy cane coral, what's important is in its branches, that's where eggs and flatworms and redworms like to hide. Um, and so you're going to take a turkey baster, and I just have a small pipette kind of thing, um, because I want to be a little bit more pr precise, it's a little smaller. And you're just going to want to squirt jets of water on it. Just right in between all the branches. Then you're going to want to do that for all the Okay, so then after two to three minutes, uh, what you're going to want to do is then gently just kind of shake them, get anything off them that might be in, uh, return them to the clean water. It's important that you clean them before you put them back in your tank um, because you don't want that chemicals in the reef dip going directly back into your aquarium. Uh, a helpful tip for inspecting is at night, things like worms like bristle worms don't react well to red light. So you can shine a red light throughout the tank and try to find any pests crawling um, and see what you really got. Because a lot of the movement happens at night and you, you don't see bristle worms. You don't really see flatworms during the day for the most part. Uh, they they kind of hide and you got to keep, you have to find them sort of at night. So now after rinsing in that water, go ahead and put them back in. It's really important to take caution um, in inspecting and dipping these corals because they're not 100% clean. Definitely, definitely, definitely inspecting regularly is something you should be doing quite often. So I would go online. I recommend Treasure Coast Corals um, or any other uh, LFS local fish store in your area and pick up some reef diff. Thanks for watching. George out. Yo, VIP.